Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at the special case of text and a freeform gradient. We're going to look at a way that you can fill text with a freeform gradient but so that the text itself is still editable. I have a document created that is my screen size but it doesn't matter how big your document is. You're going to select the type tool and you're going to type your word. I'm just going to type the word color. I'm going to select my Word and then I'm going to change my font. So I'm using a font called and then it ends and I'm going to use a font size or a type size of 450 points. I'm going to position my word pretty much inside my document in the middle. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure I don't have my text selected. You can prove to yourself that a freeform gradient isn't going to work by just selecting freeform gradient and you'll see that you get this indicator on your mouse pointer to say that that's not possible to be done. So you'll click away from your text and go to the rectangle tool, create a rectangle the size of your artboard and click OK and square it up on your artboard so that it covers everything. I'm going to set mine to a slightly different color. It's going to lose its color in a minute. That's just fine. We're going to the layers palette. You're going to want to swatch that because there are some things that you can do that will help working with this particular process. We're going to reverse the order of these two objects in the layer. So we're going to put the text on top and the colored background or the colored rectangle underneath. We're going to select both objects. So you can see that they're both selected here. I'll right click and choose make clipping mask. So what that does is it clips the text to the color of the rectangle. And if we fill the rectangle with a freeform gradient, then the text is going to be filled with a freeform gradient. But you'll look here in the layers palette, and this here is the word color, but it's really hard to see it because it has no color. So what we're going to do before we go any further is just select this object here, and I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to apply a color to it. And it doesn't matter what color I choose. For some reason, I had to do that twice. I've had to do it twice every time. So just be aware that it may not work the first time or it might fill it with white and the second time it works just fine. The benefit of this is that we can now see the word color in our layers palette. And if we need to change the word, then it's really clear where we're going to click to change the word. Otherwise, if it was just white there, it would be really difficult to understand what's going on. So I think do yourself a favor and change the color of the text. And it doesn't matter because it's not affecting the document at all. It's just helping you out in the layers palette. I'm going to lock this down. It will go some way towards avoiding creating a mess here. And I'm going to click on the rectangle that is the full size of the artboard. And into this, I'm going to place my freeform gradient. This is the freeform gradient tool. So you click open the gradient and go to freeform. And what you see now really depends a bit on what you've been doing in Illustrator. And sometimes you'll see nothing but dots on the screen and everything will be white. These are gradient stops. So they can be altered in terms of their size and they can also be moved around. You can change their color by double clicking on them and selecting a color. So I'm going to make mine quite bright color. So let's go and choose a sort of pink for this stop. I'm going to select this one and choose a different color for the stop. Making sure that you choose colors that are sort of close to each other on the color wheel will mean that you don't end up with sort of muddy browns. Double click on this. I'm going to select a sort of purple here. And down here, I'm going to select a green, but I'm going to add another stop. So I'm just going to click somewhere to add another stop and I can add a sort of in-between color if you like, a blue to get to my green. At this point, you can move things around and just adjust your gradient. You can add additional colors. So I might want to add a sort of yellow, orange color in here. With the stop selected, you can obviously adjust its size, but you can also just move it around to see how it looks over the top of your text. When you're happy with that, you're good to go. You actually have a piece of text that has a freeform gradient inside it, but there are a couple of things to be aware of. One of them is how you're going to edit your type. So I'm going to unlock my type here. I'm going to click on this type layer, and then I can go to my type tool, 
select this and change the text itself. The text is too big right now, so I'm just going to move it around and resize it. And as I move it over the freeform gradient, I can pick a really good spot for it to appear in my document. Obviously resize it if I need to. Once I'm finished, I'm just going to lock that type layer down. Now it's also possible to save freeform gradients as graphic styles. I have a video on that. Right now it's linked in the top right corner of the screen, but I'm going to show you how that might work as a gradient style. I'm going to open my gradient panel, go to the libraries user defined, and I have a whole lot of gradients in freeform too. So I'm going to grab these and, and just add them to my gradient styles panel. From there, with the rectangle here that's actually supplying the color for my text selected, I can click on these graphic styles and just experiment with graphic styles that I have previously created. And I can now use inside this document if I find one I kind of like. Then I can always go to the type element and move it around because it's going to, of course, change dependent on where it is placed inside the document relative to the underlying rectangle that has that freeform gradient applied to it. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.